I'm Bob Colt, and we're continuing our conversations in Charlotte Public Schools. Tara Becker and Ben Vasquez are joining me today. Tara, you've uh, we've talked before, and yes. and Ben is a student, obviously, in the school district. We're going to talk about the Harvard Model Congress, and uh, what do we need to know? Tara, why don't why don't you define it first, and then we'll let Ben <laughs> tell us more about it. Definitely. Well, Harvard Model Congress is a program that's been at Charlotte since 1999. And our students, it depends on the year, we either attend Boston or we attend in San Francisco. It is put on by Harvard University students and it's essentially a holistic government simulation. So our students will go out there and they will per portray roles of senators, representatives, Supreme Court judges, lobbyists, the media, the West Wing staff, the Democratic Party staff, Republican Party staff, so really all encompassing of everything that happens in Washington, D.C. And then we get a little sightseeing, and, and I'm sure we'll, we'll get into that a little more. But the, of course, the purpose of the trip is our students to get a, a really wide picture of what our government does and how they do it. Well, Ben, how cool is that? Uh, it's really cool. From like a student standpoint, it's it's such a different experience because you know the government seems so complex, and I think that's because it's really something that can't be taught. It can't really be explained. It's just something that has to be experienced. And once you experience it, I mean, it's really not as as complicated as it seems at first. And uh, you know, this is a situation. It's an opportunity, unlike any other, to really experience the government in full, to really be put in full swing and just see how everything works. It really it helps you understand you know, really what's going on in society. And that's an important part of you know, being a high school student. You're coming up, you're coming into voting age, you need to start getting educated on these things, really understand what's happening. Because, I mean, these things affect you. When you're growing up, it doesn't really seem like it does. And even sometimes when you're growing up, it doesn't really seem uh, like these like these bills that are passing and everything, oh, health care reform, blah, blah, blah. it's just a bunch of talk. But it really helps you understand how these things affect you and how they are passed down on you and really what's going on in, in D.C. And, and so... You play a role when you go yes. to the Congress, and do you get to choose, or is it assigned, or how do you make that determination? A little of both. Yeah. Um, our students sign up when way back in September if they, what program they'd like to be in. Mm -hmm. um, ben has been a senator for both years, and he's chosen to be a senator. Um, we've had numerous kids that do the special programs, which are the media, the Supreme Court judges. We had a student this year on the... Um, National Security Council and the FBI and so they did a lot of um, they had a midnight crisis that they had to deal with at midnight so they got woken up and they had to deal with that so it really is um, up to the students uh, what they want to do um, however they get assigned the role so I'll get a list of senators and then I'll say okay all five of you that wanted senators you now need to pick which particular senator you want and there's and you maybe can talk about the research that you did before you what? Yeah, senator, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, when you when you're picking a senator, they give you the list of the senators and then the committee they're in. So I always try and pick a committee that's gonna talk about things that are interesting, which has been nice. I've been in the foreign relations committee and the judiciary committee, so really some fun issues. And um, basically, you get your senator's name, you're in, and you're given a briefing packet, all of the subjects that you'll talk about while you're there. And then just like a basic outline of what it is, what the problem is, what the Republican viewpoint is, what the Democratic viewpoint is, and the, and the history that this issue has gone through. And then it's your responsibility to get on your senator's website, or your, your person's website, whatever role you're playing. Their website, all, all the public officials have them, uh, Wikipedia, whatever resources you can find that will really help you understand you know, their position on this, uh, how they voted on it in the past, statements they've made, different things that they've done that have conveyed what they feel about this issue. And then when you're in conference, it's your responsibility to uh, portray their viewpoints, even if they're not necessarily your own, which can be frustrating and it can be weird, but it's a really good technique to, it, you know, it makes you think about the other side, where other people are coming from, uh, different viewpoints, which is a really important thing to have if you're ever going to have, you know, an educated viewpoint is to understand where other people are coming from. So it's really it's it's really interesting and it's it's cool. I mean it's really it's a lot of fun to kind of learn about these people, you know, senators that vote on things that affect us and I, I had no idea who they were before I played them. And um, it's really interesting to kind of see 
what they think. Well, fun and challenging. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and how do they challenge you? Well, I think one of the more challenging things actually comes once you're there. It's really easy to kind of pick up their statements and, you know, see where they're at. But then when you're in conference and bills are being discussed and, you know, progress is being made, you have to kind of think, well, you know, based on what I know of how he's acted in the past, how is he going to feel about this amendment? How is he going to feel about this bill? And that's the really challenging part, to, to keep to keep thinking like them, to take what they've made and make assumptions about, well, you know, I don't know, that my guy would really like this. So that's... Do they give you the opportunity to cut deals and everything? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Anything goes. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's a, it, it must be a, just a unique learning experience that kids in Charlotte, uh, joining kids across the nation, get to participate in. Yes, Charlotte is the only school from Michigan actually that attends either Boston or San Francisco, and really one of the only schools from the Midwest. Um, it's in California. It's a lot of the West Coast kids, and in Boston, as you can imagine, it's a lot of the East Coast. And we're one of the few public schools that attend as well. So it introduces our kids to just a different uh, demographic of of people that they wouldn't necessarily meet in Mid Michigan. So. Yeah. And, and so as you meet these different people, Ben, how do you process this? I, I mean, because now you're meeting people from different areas, and a lot of them just think differently than you do. Yeah, uh, that first day is intimidating. You come in and all of the delegates are there, and they're just in this giant room, you're looking around, going, oh my goodness. Um, but, and you get into committees, and it's scary, it's weird, and, but it's... It's cool, and it's it's interesting, you know, you go through high school with the same group of people, you know, I've been with my same class for eight years and all, and you, you get very used to working with them, talking to them, thinking with them, and this really challenges you to meet new people, to work with people you don't know very well, to, it helps your social skills kind of get that message across. And you're right, I mean, coming from a lot of kids, uh, like we went to San Francisco this year, a lot of kids there are from California, and they have a sort of California mindset. They they don't really understand like a problem that someone in Michigan deals with. You know, none of them have had to wake up in the morning and scrape their windshield. They don't they don't understand. Uh, and and that certainly relates in politics. Uh, and it is it's very cool. For one, it kind of gives you that different perspective of you know like what Cal people in California are really like, because uh, there is certainly a difference. Uh, but it's. It's um, it is tough, and it but it's good. I think it's good. And throughout the week or the weekend, you really do get a lot better with like talking with people you don't know, meeting with people you don't know, and just being able to be like, okay, this is where I'm at. Where are you at? And then let's work together. So how is it different if you choose to be a senator, or you choose to be in the press corps? Um, how is the experience a little different? Because I think people would like to know that. Well. Uh, I guess it, it's just what you do there. It, being a senator, I, I went to committees, I went to party caucuses, uh, I, I talked about bills, I passed bills, things like that. Uh, another kid from our school, a friend of mine, he was in the media. His job was a lot different. You know, he didn't sit in a room all day and talk about things. He walked around, he interviewed people, he interviewed me a couple times, that was fun. Uh, he, he writes reports every night, they, they have like a little Twitter, they tweet what's going on in our, in our mock congress. Um, you know, if you're in NSC, you talk about different issues, kind of that same idea, but they're giving crises all the time, like, okay, a bomb has just been dropped, we need to act now, what do we do? Uh, yeah, like Ms. Becker mentioned, they had the midnight crisis, which was frustrating for me, because both of the people in NSC were in my room. Uh -huh. So they came back at 2.30 a.m., none of them thought to bring a key. So <laughs> they're banging on the door at 2.30 a.m., they come in all pumped up, like, yeah, we just saved America, I'm trying to sleep. But, um... <laughs> Uh, it just, it is, it will, it will pretty drastically change the experience. Now that being said, there isn't an experience there that isn't great. There are every, no matter what you do, no matter what your role is, you're going to get so much out of it. And you're still going to be able to see the entire government. It's not like there's any role that's very secluded from the other ones. Everyone interacts. You'll just simply see it from a different angle. Yeah. And, and so, Tara, as a learning experience, how do you kind of categorize this? This is a hands-on unique opportunity that that kids in Charlotte have that kids nowhere else in Michigan really participate in. Exactly. So so it's not classic social studies or government relations, is it? No, it's not. I mean, our students, I can tell a lot of my AP government students attend this conference and they do better on the AP test and 
that's and it's not necessarily because they're out there studying and learning mm -hmm. vocab but when they come back to class and I'll say okay everyone we're going to talk about how Bill becomes a law they've done it they've lived it um, they had their hands right in there working on that bill on its process of becoming a law and not only that but they see the connections and that's huge on the AP government test in May is do you understand how lobbyists affect committees do you understand how um, the president you know is going to affect whether or not this bill is passed and how this bill is implemented so just living that experience has been marvelous for our students and it just it ties in with my class very well so I'm very fortunate that it does that so well so so Ben if you were to tell other people here's what I learned what would you tell them I learned what the government is I mean you really don't understand until you really live it you can read about it, you can know everything there is to know about it, but you don't understand. It is, it's very different than what I thought going in. And, I, it, and my experience was completely different than what I thought it would be going in, and, and, and it was much better. Um, I guess you just you learn really every little nook and cranny that happens, and I'm sure not every nook and cranny, but it's such a different, it just puts things in perspective of like what's really happening. You sort of think of, at least I sort of always thought it was like the government is like this weird sort of far off entity full of these strange people that just existed. And I didn't know what they were like. And I knew like sort of how things worked. Like I knew, okay, bills go through a committee and then a Senate and then the House and then it's a law. But I didn't understand like how difficult that process actually is and how much really goes into it. And, you know, people always complain about Congress never doing their job, but when you're going, you're a member of Congress, you understand, like, wow, this is a heck of a job. This is not something we can just do. I mean, this is a process, especially, yeah. you know, with the political schism that our country's in right now. Yeah. And so, so does this make you interested in government service and politics? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I was a junior in Ms. Becker's AP government class, and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. Government was not even sort of on my radar. And then I was really enjoying the class. She talked me into going on HMC. And it was, for me, it was a life-changing experience. And I think for most people, it's a life-changing experience. Um, and I, I, it has absolutely just, I've been obsessing over it. I want to go into politics. I'm going to go to Notre Dame in the fall, and I'm really excited about that. I'm going to major in political science. And it is, it was because of this experience, I was like, wow, I mean, this is a really interesting thing. And it's something I really enjoy. Policy and all that is something I really enjoy. And I didn't even know. And I, I probably wouldn't have known if it weren't for HMC. Now, I mean, that's not saying everyone that goes to HMC is going to go into politics and stuff. But it does, everyone that goes, no matter what, they understand a little better. And they get so much out of it. So, Tara, you must be surprised that a student says, I want to go into politics. <laughs> It's very exciting, yeah. and, and it wasn't a surprise. When I watched Ben in committees, um, he did a fabulous job, and part of the reason I brought him in, I'm going to brag for a little bit, he actually received in both years, last year and this year, the outstanding delegate of his committee. So out of 30 students in his committee, the Harvard student who was chairing his committee chose him as the best delegate in, that, great. in his delegation. That's so great. it is phenomenal, and it obviously shows that he not only knows his stuff, because there's a lot of people out there that know what they're talking about, but he can share that with the other people in his committee in a respectful way, but also in a persuasive way as well. So, you That's know, great. I think, yeah, it, it's really exciting to, you know, I told him when he's, when he's president, he better, you know, get me one of those plum book jobs. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, how do you, how do you actually look forward to taking some of the things you learned to Notre Dame? Because going to college is, must be exciting for you now. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I guess it's just sort of a base knowledge. With anything, you're going to learn better if you know a little bit about it going in. And I feel like my base knowledge, because of HMC and Ms. Becker's class, is very, very strong. And it is really giving me a sort of different confidence. Because I, I can confidently say I'm not confused about the government. And I don't think that's something that most people can say. They can understand bits and pieces, but you know, no one really knows what's going on there. And I feel like I have a much better idea of what's happening in D.C. because of HMC. And because of that, I mean, studying political science, knowing so much about the political system and how it really works, is just going to help me be able to build on that. So what bothers you then, Ben? What did, if you could change the system, what don't you like? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, we do have a limited amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think that a lot of people just need to listen to each other. A lot of people are very, very 
excited about their party and their beliefs and they take pride in the party they come from and to me that doesn't really make sense because that's just your belief system and your values and someone else's are completely different and that's okay and I think that's what a lot of people sort of misunderstand or misinterpret in America today but I mean that's sort of a different subject. And you have to have the ability in politics though to negotiate and compromise yeah. deals and, and a lot of people don't come into the political world thinking that way. Absolutely. I mean that's a big thing is that you deal with you know, you deal with other people and you have to understand and respect their viewpoints. You can't just snug them up because you think, oh, that's stupid. And it, it matters. It's their opinion. They have a vote equal to yours and you need to really listen to them. Let them uh, get their message across so you can get yours across. So how do you become successful in persuading people to do what you want to do? It's, it's difficult. <laughs> um, I was a senator in the minority party both years, so that can be frustrating. Uh, just knowing that you know, if you don't do enough work, you're, you'll lose every vote. It's just the way it is. They have the majority. Um, I guess the technique I've always used is to is to start. I'll propose a compromise, and it's it's not a compromise. It's entirely my size or my side. And then they'll be like, "Well, I don't like that. Meet me halfway." And their halfway is still pretty much on my side. And but um, that's just a technique I've always used, and it works for me usually. But I think it's a lot about being a good listener and a good speaker and being able to get your point across and also just being really good at changing people's minds. I don't know how else yeah. to put it. And, and so, but persuasion is a science and that's part of the science, the political science of what you're learning, right? Yeah. Well, being persuasive is something that I think you have to sort of pick up, especially when you're at HMC. If, you, if people aren't listening to you, uh, then there's no point in being there. There's no point in speaking, really. So the first thing you have to do is really, I guess, sort of develop a tone in which when you speak, people will listen. That's pretty important. That's something that's sort of underdeveloped. And that's something I didn't even realize the importance of until I was at HMC. I went up the first couple times I talked, and, you know, people heard me, but I didn't really stick. So I had to be like, yeah, I really got to put something behind this so that people are actually listening to me. People take what I say seriously. And then uh, after that, you really listen to other people. And that's something I picked up at HMC for sure. A lot of people make the mistake when they're in a debate or whatever, is they have you know their sort of side, and they know what they're going to say, and the other person's talking, they're just waiting for them to be done, and then they come out with what they're going to say. And that is not going to get you anywhere. You have to really listen when the other, when the other side, when it, another delegate's at the podium, you have to listen to what they're saying. I mean, conversations evolve as they happen, and if you just like stick to your guns, then the conversation's just going to evolve without you. You always have to be in the conversation and... Uh, sort of picking on the last point they made and expanding off of that and trying to swing it back in your direction. Mm -hmm. and, and so you've been successful just by the designations you've, designations you've gotten at these Congress situations. And what would you tell future Charlotte students who may participate in the same sort of model Congress? Uh, the biggest thing is don't be intimidated. A lot of people sort of think it is a scary thing. You know, I recommend it to all my friends and tell everyone, you guys should really go to HMC. And they're like, I don't know enough about the government. It's like, well, you really don't have to know that much. I mean, it's a learning experience. The whole point of it is to go and learn. Uh, the, the idea isn't to already know everything and then just go in and do it. I mean, they want you to learn. They don't want people uh, that think they know everything. They want people that are willing to learn things. And so, yeah, just don't be intimidated. You know, someone might have a nice suit and speak with really big words. It doesn't mean that they know anything. It just means they have money and they know big words. And, um, and believe in yourself. Confidence is huge in these things. You know, really believe that what you're saying is important and what you're saying you know, uh, matters to the conversation. And that, you know, everyone gets an equal vote and you have your vote. And don't let anyone else have your vote. Because a lot of people will do that. And that's something I take advantage of. Something that people are, you know, they're weak and they'll vote whichever way. You just like, hey, you know, vote this way. Uh, have an independent mind and really uh, just go in there confident and ready to learn. So, Tara, it's not just the program that goes on. I mean, it's the whole experience of traveling to another place that kids get exposed to. Exactly. And I think that's, I mean, obviously I love the program, I love HMC, but our students really get, a lot of our kids haven't been outside the state or they haven't been on an airplane. So going through an airport all the way through when we're in San Francisco, we do Alcatraz and we do a bay cruise and it was 70 and sunny when we were there. It was beautiful. 
um, and we do a city tour where they get to see a lot of San Francisco in a short amount of time. Um, and we're, our hotel is right in the heart of Chinatown in San Francisco, so they really get that unique experience of being in, what did they say, it was the biggest Chinatown outside of China. So a really unique experience. And in Boston, we see the Blue Man Group, and we do the Freedom Trail, where they see a lot of really historic, historic markers. Um, and just really getting, they experience the subway. Everyone is really <laughs> excited about riding the T in Boston. Um, and of course we were in San Francisco when the Giants were playing, or the 49ers were playing, and you know, just experiencing that big city. I can walk down the street and be at any store I want to be in. <laughs> so Ben, you, you go through the learning experience. What, what affected you most in the environmental experience as you go to these different places? Oh my gosh, it's a whole different world. You're being exposed to this new, this new culture, this big city culture. And it's something that a lot of people, myself included, don't really experience until you're at something like this. And you can go, you know, you can go visit San Francisco. Like I had been to San Francisco before, but there's nothing really like, I mean, for three days, you're literally just living in San Francisco. You go, you eat in San Francisco. You have to learn your way around town a little bit. Uh, learn how to navigate, always, you know, get back to the hotel. And it's, it's, a, it's a much different experience. You know, a lot of people here, they grow up in Charlotte, they've been in Charlotte their whole lives. They're very comfortable with Charlotte. They've never had to really experience anything new. They know, you know, just about every person in Charlotte. Uh, so it's, it's this whole different world, just being in this crowd of people you've never seen before, going somewhere you're not entirely sure where it is, but you're pretty sure. And uh, if, you know, worse comes worse, just we're right in front of that super tall building, just walk that way. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, it's a good thing because you'd like to think that people, you know, have aspirations to, to be somewhere else. And, and um, that's a really, it's the, sort of the first exposure to that. The first idea of, you know, Charlotte is awesome and everyone loves it, but it's not the only town in the world and it's not the way that every town operates. Well, Ben, thanks for sharing your experience and Tara for accompanying Ben in this interview to share information. <laughs> I'm Bob Colt, and we'll continue our conversations in Charlotte Public Schools.